Hi everyone, it's Karen the Geordie Grandma. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I know it's September, but I'm about to do my August favourites and fails. I think it's about September the 9th now, so I'm a little bit late, but I thought I would still do it. Because, so let's get on with it. Um, I'll start with a couple of things I've been watching. I've been trying to use my Netflix subscription a bit more lately. So I've watched The Imitation Game. Um, which is about Alan Turing who cracked the Enigma code during World War II and it actually helped shorten the war apparently by about two or three years. Um, the film's been around a while and I never really fancied watching it. Uh, I'm a bit like that with films. I'll look through, like I'll go through all the films that are on Netflix or now or whatever and I think, oh, I don't fancy that, I don't fancy that. So I'm using the, there's a My List um, function in Netflix where you can, you can put all of these things that you want to watch in your list and then you just choose from your list what you want to watch. So I spent about 10 minutes just going through some films that... I didn't, you know, I wasn't really that keen on, but I thought, oh, well, you know, it's a film. It doesn't sound too bad. I'll put it in there and we'll just watch them. So we'll pick the imitation game this night uh, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I didn't expect to. I didn't expect it to be humorous, which it is in places. Um, it's Benedict Cumberbatch, who I re think is a really brilliant actor. And he, you know, he was fantastic in this. It's a really sad ending, so if you if you don't know the story, which I didn't actually know the story, um, and it was quite sad at the end, but I won't I won't spoil it for you by letting you know what happens. But yeah, really enjoyed that film. I can highly recommend it. The other thing we've watched recently on Netflix is the Umbrella Academy. It's a sci-fi thing. I know a lot of people don't like sci-fi, um, but it is about uh, this group of not teenagers but they're probably in their 20s who are superheroes it, it begins where there's there's 47 children born um the mothers were never pregnant they were just all of a sudden the they were you know nine months pregnant and the child was born and they all have some special abilities and this american guy or he may even be british this guy anyway um buys seven of the children from the mothers who because they'd never been pregnant and weren't expecting anything they were probably happy to 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 sell them on so he buys these seven children and brings them up and they become like this superhero gang uh, and it's about them saving the world it's a bit stupid but i really i enjoyed the characters i thought the characters were very well written each one had its own you know little quirks and um storyline which i found quite interesting there's been two series of it and we've watched two series and I, I can't wait for the third series to come out. If you like that kind of thing, I think you will enjoy The Umbrella Academy. If you don't like that kind of thing, you won't enjoy it. Um, Robert Sheehan's in it, who was in Misfits. Um, I think he's an Irish guy, uh, but he's he's American, um, called Klaus in The Umbrella Academy. And his, his character is just, it's fantastic. He's so funny. Uh, it's, it's worth watch, watching just for his character. But yeah, I can highly recommend The Umbrella Academy. The next thing, which is me favourites this month, which is a bit odd, but if you've been, if you watched my video a few weeks ago where I was talking about wanting to lose weight and, you know, get me diabetes under control, this will make sense. And it is nuts. I have been enjoying nuts. Yes, hazelnuts and almonds um instead of eating chocolate and biscuits and crisps as snacks i've been having some mixed nuts uh i got these from aldi i think they're 199 a pack which is really good value because there's quite a lot in there and i just take i take some of each and i think i had some some walnuts as well which i'm not so keen on um, and some seeds that I bought, some sunflower seeds, some pumpkin seeds, and I just put them in a little bowl and I pick at them. Uh, I try not to pick at them all day long, but it's just a little bowl, so if I'm feeling a little bit peckish, I'll just pick at some of these. So I, I didn't think I liked hazelnuts, but actually they're really nice hazelnuts. I could probably eat that whole packet. Um, so a bowl of nuts to nibble on, I really enjoyed that, and I'm still enjoying it. 
Another food item that I've been enjoying, again, is a replacement snack for like chocolates and, and sweets and things like that, is celery and peanut butter. Now, that might sound a bit strange. I'd forgotten how much I liked celery, actually, but we started buying it again recently because I've been having lots of salads. Um, and I get a stick of celery and I cut it into three and then I get some crunchy peanut butter. Don't put a lot in, just maybe a teaspoon in each piece and I just spread it along the top of the celery and munch away on that. And that's really tasty. Um, it even goes with a cup of coffee. I know you can't dip your celery and peanut butter in a cup of coffee, but it actually goes quite well with the cup of coffee. And it, it satisfies me craving for, you know, just something to, to nibble on. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for something to replace um, chocolates and sweets with, try celery with peanut butter, you might be surprised. Next, on to some beauty products. Beauty products? Bath products. Anyway, next on to these. Something else I've been really enjoying uh, in August is this Lacura from Aldi uh, Zingy Lime Shower Gel. Kickstart packed with extracts and oils and this is absolutely fab. I need to go and get some more. It is Zingy Lime and it really is Zingy Lime. It smells like a... It's, it's, well, it smells like a cut lime is what it smells like. It's absolutely gorgeous and it really does just wake you up in the morning. Shower first thing in the morning, some Zingy Lime shower gel and you're ready to start the day. I think that was only 99 pence as well. Definitely worth a go. The other thing that I've also been enjoying from Aldi is this Lacura Refining and Mattifying Pink Clay Exfoliating Face Scrub. Try and say that after a drink. Um, I've really been enjoying this as well. It's quite... Uh, I'll just put some on my finger for you so you can see it. Can you see it there? It's not very... Um, scrubby if that's a word uh, but it is enough to kind of make your face feel like you've really cleaned it and it makes your face feel it leaves your face feeling soft um, and cleansed so I've really been enjoying that I think that was I want to say 3 99 I can't remember I've had it I've had it a, a while now um, and I, I had only recently just started to use it but I really do like that and now I've got scrub all over my fingers and nothing to wipe it off with. Two seconds. That's better. Um, so next is this. It is Vamouche Pet Hair Dissolver. And I think I got this from Home Bargains and I think it was 4 99 And it says for hair-free pet bedding and washing machines. Now, I've, we've got a cat... Uh, Milo and she's um, a very pale ginger colour and she has been sleeping on our throws. We've got throws on the settee, you know, I've got throws on my bed and she sleeps on them. I don't shoo her off them because I think if you've got a pet, you know, they're part of the house, you know, they're part of your family, let them lie on stuff. But unfortunately that means my throws are always covered in Milo fur. Um, and I'd had three of my throws, quite big throws as well, at the bottom of my washing basket for quite a few weeks because I thought I don't want to put them in the washing machine with all this Milo hair on because it's just going to block my washing machine. So when I saw this in Home Bargains I thought hmm I'll give this a try um, and you just put some uh, you put a sachet in the drawer of your washing machine and it says it dissolves pet hair leaving your washing machine sparkling clean. And it does. Uh, it took the pet hair, it took the Milo fur off my throws perfectly. Didn't block my washing machine, no pet hair in my washing machine. So I highly recommend that. I think it's really good. You get three sachets in there. Um, and obviously I'm not going to wash my me, me throws every week, but you know, maybe once a month or something. If I took them in the washing machine, I put some of that in and I can be... Happy that there won't be any Milo fur left on them. So, yeah, Vamouche Pet Hair Dissolver. I feel like I'm doing an advert. Vamouche Pet Hair Dissolver. Anyway, moving swiftly on, 
The other thing that I also got from Home Bargains that is absolutely fabulous, um, I love a candle from Home Bargains and they're starting to get their, their autumn ones in. Um, and this one I just had to have. This is a chocolate orange candle and these are the Wickford's candles. I've just been burning this so I'm trying not, I hope that um, the wax is solidified again when I take the lid off because it will smell for you. Uh, I know you can't smell it, but it really does smell like a chocolate orange. It's just it's absolutely gorgeous. It smells really, really strong when you smell it just like that. And it smells a little bit sickly, but when you're burning it, it doesn't smell quite as strong or quite as sickly. It just smells nice. It really smells like a chocolate orange. And supposedly, smelling candles that, that smell like chocolate and things like that are supposed to curb your cravings for chocolate. Not sure if it does that for me, but it definitely smells like a chocolate orange. Absolutely beautiful. So if you like chocolate orange, you'll love this candle. And they are $2.99 from Home Bargains. Highly recommend the candles from Home Bargains. I mean, that is a huge candle. That takes me weeks to burn that. Um, and when you think the, uh, what's those other candles called? The expensive ones, I can't remember the name of them. God, what's the name of them? I'll put it in here if I remember it. But they're about 15 quid a jar and they're about the same size. And they are just as good from Home Bargain. So if you've never tried one, go and pick one up and I'm sure you won't be disappointed. The other favourite I had in August was a book. Now, this might be a bit controversial, this book, because it was the it was the book of the month in Caroline Mrs M's um, book club last month, and it was my choice. I, I, I picked the three books that month, and The Clockmaker's Daughter by Kate Morton was the one everybody chose to read. So I've read Kate Morton books before, um, and the consensus in the, the book club group, which if you don't know about it and you haven't joined it, I'll put a link below so you can go and have a look, um, the consensus in the group was that they didn't like the book, uh, they found it difficult to get into, which I fully understood. Um, the first three or four chapters in it are quite slow. It, it's about, it starts off where there's, a, I think it's in the 1800s, um, and there's a group of people in this house, uh, and there's a gunshot, and somebody's dead, and then somebody's missing. In the, in the the books about you know trying to find out what happened to this missing person, but then it it keep the timeline keeps jumping around. There's lots of different characters in it, and the f the first main chunk of the book is about this character called Elodie. Now I think she is a quite a boring character, and it wasn't it wasn't very obvious how that her storyline was tying in with the main story of the book so I think that was what made it feel like it was really slow and wasn't going anywhere and to be honest I almost gave up with it um, but I, I persevered because I do like Kate Morton and I continued to read it and the more I read and the more they introduced other characters whose stories were really interesting the more I started to enjoy it uh, I, I just loved the feel of the book. I like the way Kate Morton writes um, and I like the, the, the storyline. I think if I'd realised, when I got to the end, I realised it was more like a, an, a kind of an, an, a collection of short stories from different characters that all somehow tied together with this house in the mystery of the missing person. Um, and I think if I'd known that from the beginning, it might have been easier. And I think if they'd started with a different character story from the beginning, it might have drew you in more. But by the time I finished the book, I really, really enjoyed it. It was one of those books that I want to read again. And I want to read it again because I, I, I did enjoy it. But I think it's one of those books that if you read it again you'll notice more pointers, more clues, more things that you maybe skimmed over the first time. Um, there's a lot of descriptive text in Kate Morton's books and I think a lot of it you do skim over but I think you shouldn't skim over it because I think there's a lot of clues in those things that, that kind of move the story on. I hope that makes sense but it, I'm really... I, 
you know, I'm sorry that people didn't like it. Um, maybe if you give it a second go, you might enjoy it. But I loved it. Once I'd finished it, I just loved it. I loved the ending. It, it you know, it it was just a lovely book. I had one fail in August that was um, a face cream. And this is the Super Drug Vitamin A uh, SPF 15 Moisturising Day Cream. And unfortunately, this didn't work for me. Um, it is fairly uh, cheap. It was only three ninety nine. It smells quite nice. It's got quite a creamy, creamy texture to it. But I felt it was very sticky on my face. You know, some moisturisers you put on and they feel sticky as they're going on. Um, but then after, you know, half an hour, it kind of doesn't. It, it sinks in. This one didn't do it for me. It stayed sticky. I don't know whether it's just my skin um, texture. Uh, I have fairly dry skin. Don't know whether it was that. But for whatever reason, this didn't work for us. I know some people recommended it um, and they really like it. So, you know, give it a try. See what you think yourself. But for me, it didn't work. So, super drug. Really sorry, but I won't be buying that again. Uh, those are my favourites and one fail for the month. I am going to put in one favourite here, my last favourite of the month, which is a photograph. And I think I'm going to start doing this on a monthly basis. I'm going to put in my favourite photograph of the month that either I've taken or um, my kids have taken. Um, or maybe I just see it on the internet. But I'm going to put in a favourite photograph. And this photograph just warms my heart. It is absolutely gorgeous and it is obviously I'm going to put it in here so you can see it now um it, these are my two grandchildren Ashton and Harriet and they're playing dress up a superhero dress up and this is Harriet's I think this is her first time of wearing a like a dress up costume and her little face she's just so chuffed and the way she's looking at Ashton as if to say are we fab look at us oh, I just want to I want to get them and I want to squash them um so I really love this photo. It, it, if I'm ever feeling a bit down, just look at this photo and it makes a smile. Uh, so I hope you like it as well. So those were all my favourites and my one fail for this month. I hope you found them enjoyable. If you've you know experienced any of, the, any of these products or books or programmes I'm talking about and have a different opinion to me, please let us know in the comments below. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel and you like the kind of videos that I'm doing, then uh, please subscribe and then you'll get to see them going forward when I do them. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you again really soon. So bye for now.